right, so we have a solid rectangular block with the square base. So here's the square base. Okay, and its base length is x. And then we have um, a height of h that's undefined. Okay, pretending this is square for now. And they said they want the height to be called h. All right, so the first thing we're, oh, okay. And then we're expressing h in terms of x to show that the volume is given by this equation. So we need to write the surface area equation, essentially. So, Um, the way I drew this is really bizarre, but this, these are the bases, these two. So the surface area is going to be given by the fact that our base is x by x. Okay, and that gives me an area of x squared, and we have one, two of those. Okay, plus we also have four other areas, and they all happen to be the same. Um, because the height is the same across the boards. So we have a height here, height here, height here, and then down on the ground we have a height. So we have four sides that have an area of x by h or x times h. Okay, so finally I'm going to substitute 96 in for the surface area, and then I am going to isolate h. Okay, because what we know about volume is volume of any shape is always the area of the base times the height. So we can substitute the height in there. So I'm going to start by moving 2x squared to the other side. Okay, and then since I'm isolating h, I'm going to divide 4x off of that side. Okay, so as I'm doing that, 96 divided by 4x, that gives me 24 in the numerator, x in the denominator, make sure you don't drop your x here, minus half x, or x over 2, that's the same thing, equals h, because 2 divided by 4 is half, x squared divided by x is x. Okay, so there's h. Now, the volume is equal to the area of the base, which is x squared, times the height, which is... 24x, I'll do this with a different color. So I now am substituting what I found for the height. Okay, and now I'm going to um, multiply. So basically I end up with 24. x squared divided by x is x minus x squared divided by x is, I mean, sorry, x squared times x is x cubed because this is x over 1. And then times half. So I think that's what they wanted us to show. So I just distributed into each term. Okay, so that's part I. Part double I says find the stationary value of V. Okay, so V, the stationary value, that means that's code word for find the vertex. That's the stationary value. So I'm going to start by taking the derivative. Okay, and the stationary value of, um, and I shouldn't have said vertex, it means the maximum or the minimum. Okay, um, so um, that happens when our derivative is equal to zero because that's the slope of the tangent line at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this equation. Okay, I'm going to multiply both sides by a negative two-thirds. And I get 16 equals x squared. So x equals plus or minus 4. But here's where we have to think. Sorry, I'm writing kind of at a slant for some reason. So we have to kind of think. Um, 
so the x was the length of the base. I cannot have a negative base, so x has to equal 4. Okay? But we're not done because I need to find the volume when the side when the base length is 4. So I'm going back up to this original volume equation and I'm going to plug 4 in everywhere I see x. So 24 um, and it was plus. So this plus it was minus. Okay, so there was an x here, there was an x here, so the volume is equal to 24 times 4, which is 16, 8, 9, 6, that. Um, minus 64, so 4 cubed is 64 divided by 2, okay, so that means 96 minus 32, which is 64. Okay, so basically the, um, the find the stationary value of V, so it's 464. Okay, so the maximum volume when the side, the base length is 464 mm -hmm. cubic centimeters. And now we're supposed to determine whether the stationary value is a minimum or a maximum. So you could do a number line, um, an interval table essentially to see. I'm going to do the second derivative because I think that's easier, except I need to come back up here so I can see my derivative. There it is. So I'm going to take the second derivative. I'm basically doing a test for concavity to see if there's a concave, um, if the concave is upward or downward, because that tells me if I have a max or a min. So the second derivative is negative uh, 3x. So I'm going to go ahead and put 4 in here. And that gives me negative 12, which means my concave is downward, which means that my point is a maximum. Okay. Um, max because the second derivative is 